All right, guys, that's right. This title did not deceive you, and I think this is gonna be an interesting conversation in the comment section below. Definitely chime in if you want to join the madness, but today we're gonna to be talking about my new bear gun, and this is going to spark some, I, I really think, like animosity or craziness in the comment section below. And we're gonna be talking about it. It's gonna be a time, and without any further ado, guys, let's talk about why the Springfield Prodigy is my new bear gun. All right, guys, so this is the Springfield Prodigy. For those who don't know what this is, essentially this is Springfield's offering as a 1911 or 2011, or double stack 1911, 2011 typed pistol. And once again, it holds a lot of the like 1911, 2011 ergonomics setup, of course, external hammer. And of course you do have the 2011 components of this being, you know, a red dot cut slide and the pretty easily changeable red dots. Of course, you have the most notable feature, a double stacked magazine, allowing you to have, at least with magazines like this, 20 upwards or upwards of 20 plus rounds in a magazine. And so that definitely allows you to have some really cool options. However, the most notable thing with the Prodigy is that it only comes in nine mil. And I said that this was my bear gun. And I think that is going to be the interesting conversation because typically speaking in um, many places, including Alaska, but especially in the lower 48, we see a lot of people running 10 mils for bear guns and they feel completely fine and completely safe with those handguns. And I think this is a very interesting point because at what point do we draw the line between what is enough and what is not enough, you know? At what performance markers are we really looking at for judging what is going to keep us safe? And at the end of the day, I think a lot of it is highly subjective because there is analytical and physical proof of people killing things like grizzly bears, Kodiak brown bears with a nine mil pistol with the particular ammunition we're gonna talk about. Um, but ultimately dropping you know, grizzly bears in self-defense with a nine mil. And so can it be done? The answer is yes. And should it be done? I think is really the larger question. So anyways, as you guys can see, I do have a Kodiak chest rig Gunfighters Incorporated or Gunfighters Inc. This is very similar to the one that I had for the Desert Eagle. And this is a setup chest rig for this gun in particular. As you can see, nice tight tension there. Um, and once again, that is for the fact or for the for the reason that I'm able to throw this on my chest and carry it around in bear country. Now, I will say before we go into the age old debate of calibers and what will kill a bear, I think there's a lot of components to that um, discussion. And I think the biggest reason why we typically recommend things like 44s, 454 Casual, 460, you know, Roland, um, 460 Ruger, and up and up and up, and even, you know, 12 gauge Bernicke, you know, slugs, is the consistency at which those will kill a bear. And if you want to truthfully be able to, I don't want to say wing shots, but shoot, you know, rounds with reasonable carelessness and still cause a lot of damage, going with things like Bernicke slugs and a 12 gauge is probably your best bet. And I think that's why Alaska Department of Fish and Game, when they send people out into the field, like wildlife biologists, they send them with 12 gauge pump actions with Bernicke slugs because with the least amount of actual shooting, the least amount of accuracy, and given the worst case scenario, the Bernicke Special Forces slugs, or which is what they use, are going to be able to just absolutely drive like a freight train through a bear. And so that's why they have such potent loads and why they give those loads to their wildlife biologists. So I think when it comes down to it, it's always consistency, consistency, consistency. There's a lot of 
you know, kills per se um, on paper, or maybe not a lot of kills, but there are documented kills on paper with nine mil on grizzly bears, and there are kills documented with 10 mils, 44 mags, and so on and so forth. But ultimately, that's kind of the first thing. It's consistency. Will it, a nine mil work every time? I would say yes and no. I don't think it will work for every person every time. You do, if you choose to run nine mil, need to be conscious of how small the bullet is and how much energy it emits. However, if you However, if you're accurate with what you choose, you will likely find good results with a wide variety of ammunition and calibers that you probably wouldn't initially think effective. Now, the next part is if you do choose to run something like a 9 mil or a 10 mil um, or even a 44 mag is ammo selection, ammo selection, ammo selection. This is the biggest I think issue that most people have with caliber choice is that if you take a 44 Magnum with a hollow point, if you take a 10 mil with a hollow point, especially if you take a 9 mil with a hollow point, you likely will not do very well against something like a bear. However, that really changes the entire like situation or dynamic changes if you choose something like a hard cast lead bullet. And something like this hard cast lead bullet, whether it's in 45 ACP, once again, um, 10 mil, 9 mil, if you choose 44, this type of bullet right here is going to do an incredible amount of damage and is going to be able to stop and punch well above its weight. So I think it's important to note that, you know, whatever handgun caliber you decide to go with, it's not just choosing a 44 Magnum and then putting Putting something like a hollow point in it because if you choose to do that like say you choose to take a Hornady XTP and you put that Hornady XTP in your revolver that probably will not actually stop a bear even though it's a 44 Magnum even though it has way more energy more than double the energy of this bullet the bullet will mushroom because it's a hollow point and it will not penetrate effectively. Because remember, at the core of what you're trying to do here, if a bear does charge you, is it's trying or you're trying to destroy its vital organs. So you're trying to take out the you know heart, the lungs, potentially the brain if you can. You're trying to damage the spine. And so with something like hard cast lead bullets like these, with a you know good charge behind them, and once again these are plus. P loadings. So the good charge of powder behind it, this can effectively penetrate deep enough into a bear, including a grizzly bear, and go to the heart, go to the lungs, hit those vital organs and stop them, cause enough trauma to genuinely end the fight. Now, once again, it's important to note that that may be the case for these bullets. They may penetrate deep enough to get to vital organs of a bear, but you still have to shoot in the straight line because these bullets once again they go in a straight line so if you are shooting at the bear's hip or if you're shooting you know at their leg you know if you're shooting at a place where their organs are not you are not going to do effective damage and you will likely be mauled so do understand there are stipulations to this and the reality of breaking down a bullet like this is just that you have to make sense of it so lastly, let's actually talk about these bullets. So these are hard cast lead bullets, but what these bullets are specifically is the Outdoorsman bullet by um, Buffalo Boar. And these bullets are not actually that well known, surprisingly and unfortunately, but once again, these bullets have, once again, documented cases where people have used them to kill charging grizzly bears. And what it comes down to is this is a 147 grain hard cast lead bullet. So for those who don't know, hard cast is a form of lead that has alloys in it, particularly tin or antimony or something like that, um, but particularly tin. And what that does is it increases the overall hardness of your bullet. So not only that, you do also have a flat nose on here. And that flat nose, despite what people might think, this flat nose is actually really important and traditionally what you expect to see on a hard cast lead bullet because these flat noses are designed to act kind of like a freight train where they're not going to just slice through something.
something, they're going to um, crush, compact, and break the things in front of them. So if you shoot a bear or anything really, like say in the scapula, uh, a hard cast lead flat nose bullet is going to break through the scapula as opposed to striking it and bouncing off of it. And so some people might be like, why didn't they go with a you know round nose on this? But the reason why they went with a flat nose is very specific and intentional. And once again, this is what we'd expect to see out of a hard cast bullet, like a proper hard cast bullet. So you do have a 147 grain lead hard cast flat nose bullet. And of course it is a plus P loading, so these are going to be very spicy rounds. That being said, I will say I have shot 20 of these out of my Springfield Prodigy, obviously to practice with, for bear defense, but I will say it was incredibly controllable, and I will say if you shot these out of a, you know, like Glock 26, these would probably be a handful, but to be fair, these are actually very, very, very controllable and very pleasant in something like the Prodigy. And once again, that's partly because the Prodigy is a heavier gun, so it doesn't really recoil that much with normal uh, nine mil rounds. And don't get me wrong, these are like, I've shot 115 grain, I've shot 124 grain out of this handgun, and these 147 grain plus Ps do kick a lot more. However, like in the grand scheme of things, like I've shot full house load 44s, I've shot you know normal um, pressured 44 mags, I've shot 44 Sewell, 50 AE, like all of these, you know, large bore rounds, and they kick a lot more than these plus P147 um, 9 mil loads. So as far as it goes, when it comes down to it, what do I think of this as an actual serious not uh, bear defense round? I think it has a lot of promise, and I genuinely know that there are people here that carry it, and there's probably more people in Alaska that carry this round than would admit it, because ironically, if you go to the gun stores here, places like Alaska Ammo do actually carry this round, but it's pretty much always out of stock. And so it does move fast. It is a well-selling bullet here. So that shows that there are a lot of people here that do actually buy it, use it, and more than likely carry it. They just don't really talk about it. So it's not a very well talked about bullet, but I do think like there are once again documented cases of people using this ammunition to defend themselves effectively from bears. And what it comes down to is, is it effective? Yes, if you can get your shots where they need to be and you feel comfortable and are competent enough to get repeated shots off. Um, outside of that, is it the best bullet to go for? It's not going to be the most reliable or consistent killer across the spectrum. And what I mean by this is, if you are not an accurate person, if you cannot get those shots in, then this is probably not a round that will work well for you to protect you. You should go with something that is a little bit larger, a little bit heavier duty, and can do a lot more um, damage to soft tissue. And so, Every situation is gonna be different. There's no, like with any self-defense situation, like regardless, there's no clut, cut, clear, concise, you know, cut and dry, you know, like situation. And this isn't like how everything happens, right? Like, like um, with bear defense, every encounter is a different and unique encounter. So it's difficult to just carte blanche say that this bullet is the best bullet out there because it's definitely not, but it is a very venerable option. And I do look forward to carrying this gun realistically in places like grizzly bear country and carrying it and hopefully not using it. But if I have to, there is enough data out there to back it as a legitimate viable option. And once again, I feel personally like I can control a gun and be accurate enough to make the hits count. So anyways, that is my breakdown and explanation of it. But I do want to hear you, hear you guys out in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.